Hello fishing friends, this is Matthew bringing you another reel repair video. Today I'm going to show you how to service a Daiwa Procaster 120. If you enjoy my video and you've learned something, make sure you comment below, give me a big thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, let's get started on this particular reel. Okay, here's the Daiwa Procaster 120. Um, Daiwa still makes um, these spin cast reels. Some people might call them a closed faced reel. But basically, their models are all really similar. They make a silver cast, um, a gold cast, and they probably still make this Procaster. And their designs haven't changed very much. It's a really nice design, and it works really well. <clears throat> basically, you have a drag system up here where um, to loosen it, it goes to the right. To um, tighten it, it goes to the left. Um, you can take the handles and take a screw out here and you can move it, the handle from one side to the next. It has a nice button here. Um, the, the hole here is quite a bit bigger than most other spin casters. I don't know why, but that's just the way that they designed it. It actually casts farther if it had a smaller hole. Um, it's just got a single crank handle here. Um, it's got a metal, I'm pretty sure this is a metal frame. Yeah, this is a metal frame. It's made in China. I bought this reel back in, I think, 2001 or 2002. Um, for, and I bought two of them with a combo and for my sons who were pretty young at the time so we could fish for salmon up in Alaska and they could, they could have something that they could use. <clears throat> Anyways, um, it says it's a three ball bearing system. Um, it can hold um, 10 pounds test, uh, 120 yards. So pretty nice old reel. You can see it's been used quite a bit and we've used it in everything from catching salmon to trolling to catfish to trout. We've used it for all kinds of things. All right, let's get started. Like most um, reels, um, to service them, you'll need a, a couple sizes of screwdrivers, maybe a big screwdriver, a small screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, if you got a nut driver set, I would recommend that. Um, you'll need some reel lube, some grease, some oil. I've got a couple things in my grease that I like to use on these. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I like to do is disassemble the front. So these ones screw off and then you got your spinner cone here. These spinner cones are put on with a nut where I'm going to use the nut driver to take this one off. If you don't have a nut driver you can also use a big screwdriver to take it off. Okay and then this has like a D-shaped um, nut there or the, the, the shaft and so it comes off just like that. Okay, and then uh, we want to service the drag system. I haven't serviced this for a long, long time. So let's take off this retainer clip. And then we got some drag washers we need to be aware of. So let's take off this first drag washer. Okay, stainless steel drag washer, and then a, fi a thick fiber washer here, a white one. Okay, and then we can remove our spool. Okay, now you'll notice on this one, this is important to notice here, this drag washer is like a toothed or keyed drag washer, and it when it goes back in, it needs to go back into these two slots right here so that it locks in place, okay? So let's take that one off and we'll take off this fiber washer here too. And it's the same as the front. It's pretty thick and pretty rigid. And um, so that's all disassembled here. We'll clean that up. Okay, 
and let's take continue to take apart the drag here there's a spring washer here and you can tell it's a spring washer because it's it's kind of curved it's got a bend in it okay so don't get that mixed up with your top one all right and then the next one we have is we have a thin copper washer okay yeah it screws off so all we need to do to take that off is to unscrew it where you're it's tightening it all the way and then you can finish unscrewing it and take it off okay I just want to get it be able to get in there and and service every little part of that okay so you can see it's got a tooth side there and then a flat side there the tooth side goes in there and screws on and then you loosen it all the way okay and then it has another little copper washer there that uh, that rides on we'll clean that up and that's everything we don't need to take apart this little clicker here this is just a drag indicator clicker that makes noise and it's just got a little um, retaining clip there but we don't need to take that out all right so the next thing I'm going to take off is the handle um, to take the handle off you undo this right here okay it's just a cap to protect it hold your handle and take this off you, you could so there's that and make sure you don't lose the little washer that's on there um, okay so let's take off this side here and get in there and get everything else serviced so we need on this we need a little Phillips screwdriver This is the anti-reverse switch. So I'm just gonna put it out of the way there and take off these three screws right here. Let's kind of take that side plate off. Okay, you have three different sizes of screws. The two short screws go on the side and then the long screw goes on the top. Okay. And then here you have your ball bearings. And your main crankshaft. Okay, let's just take that off so that we can service everything. Now, one of the things that you have to be really careful with is Here's the anti-reverse actuator. It's a little spring that sits on this little hub right there, and it has to have to go back together in order for the, to, the anti-reverse pawl to work, which you could replace. Um, it needs to go back. That little spring right there needs to go back in that little slot right there, just like so. Okay, when it goes back together just like that that way the anti-reverse will activate see that when the anti-reverse is off it allows it to free spool okay so let's take this off okay Now, I just need to serve with this. I don't have to repair anything else, but if I, if I had to repair and replace something in here, there's two more little screws right there that, that come undone where it allows a plate to come off of there to get this little bearing and press this little bearing out. Now it's pressed in there, but I don't need to take this apart. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this apart here and be careful there's a little spring here that um, is used for this little actuator. See that little spring? And um, it's got a little screw over on this side. I don't need to do anything with that except for to add a little bit of oil to it. I've had to replace this little handle before on, on my other one, 
and then I replaced it with a silver one because I couldn't they didn't have the parts for this particular 120 all right so we got that apart let's set that aside um, the bearing will come off of there I'm just gonna leave it on there for now I'm gonna leave this little actuator on here and and just clean it off because it's not gritty or anything like that okay let's take a look at this this piece right here so here's this little piece right here now that long screw I was telling you about goes down through here and holds that in that's what hint it hinges on that's why you need that long screw right there okay wait right, to take this apart would be a real chore so okay so after inspecting this there is a way to take this apart if you need to take it apart but I'm not going to take it apart because it's just a little too complicated um, maybe if there's a request but what we have here is there's a little retaining clip that's on the end of this shaft right there that holds the spring in place and I just don't want to fiddle with that and take that apart and risk losing it and I wouldn't recommend you take it apart either you can push this out here and get in there and put some oil on your bearing right there you can take and use a toothbrush or um, and, and get some of this or use your um, screwdriver to get some of this old grease off which is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take some of this old grease off and um, and then put some new grease on there so that's what I'm gonna do and then I'm not gonna take this drag adjustment gear um, off of there there's no need to take it off either um, I can put a little bit of oil in behind it and um, and some grease around it to get it serviced and this isn't doesn't have any grit and stuff in there if you happen to drop it in the water in some muddy water and I get some dirt and grit in there what you could do is you could wash this out with hot soapy water um, get everything out that you can these bearings are stainless so let it dry it out dry it out with a blow dryer or something like that get it all cleaned out and get all the grit out of there and get it let it completely dry out and then put it back together with um, oil um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this, take a minute and clean this up, and then we'll um, grease it and put it back together. This is actually a really well-built reel. I'm really impressed with it. We're ready to put it back together. We're going to put it back together in reverse order that we, we took it apart. So let's start by applying some oil to our bearings and let that soak in. So here's one of the crankshaft bearings. We'll put some oil on that. It's a shielded bearing and so it needs to soak in. And then there's one on this side. Okay, we'll apply a little bit of oil to the switches here. Just a little drop is all it takes. And let that soak in. Okay, now there's um, a bearing down here, so I want to apply a drop of oil to this bearing here and let it soak in. I want to apply some oil to the, the shaft here where the spring is so that it can get down there and lubricate this because this gear right here actually slides back and forth on that shaft like that. We want to make sure that there's oil on there. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this side right there. That's good. Put that in there. Okay, now we're ready to grease this 
to main pinion. So for um, greasing the gears on your reel, you want to use a really sticky, good quality um, reel grease. I use this Marine Lucas Red Grease, and it's really sticky because anything that flicks off of there, off your the reel, um, is not going to get back on there. So you just need to have a good quality grease that's going to stick on there. So we'll lube that all the way around, fill up those teeth, and that's that's all it needs, okay? We'll put our bearing back on. The bearing goes on this side, and then we'll apply some gear lube to this. And we want to make sure that little spring goes in the notch perfectly. Okay, there we go. And I would check it. Right now would be a good time to check it and spin that. Three wheels. Okay, and the anti-reverse works properly. Okay, so now that I've checked that, I can go ahead and taking this piece here, it would be easier for you to put it on like it's so. On there, so we just want to turn it over like so. Make sure that this is pushed in all the way and put it together and there you go okay now click that out of the way let's put the little screws in and get them started part way And then to get this handle put in, get that in there and line it up and push it down part way and then get your screw in there and you kind of just got to fiddle it around with it to get it to go into the hole. There we go because that's your hinge pin as well. Make sure they're snug, not over tightened. You don't want to strip anything out. Okay. And press the button, make sure that's working. So that's working perfectly, okay? Now, with the shaft out like that, we want to take and apply a little bit of oil to it and let that go down in there and work that in there. Okay. All right, now we're ready to work on the drag and reassemble the drag. And I'm going to use Tri-Flow grease. This is a lighter weight grease. It's perfect for putting these drags together with. Okay, so the first thing that need, we need to put on there <coughs> is the drag gear. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease down on around here. That actually screws in and out each time you adjust it. So we need some lubrication down there. The copper washer goes down in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that so that it's on both sides. Okay, then this right here, we need to put some grease on this. It doesn't need really heavy grease. It just needs some of this tri-flow grease on here. Okay, and then we'll put it on this way so that it will engage with that gear down there. And then righty-tighty. Just so start screwing it on. Screw it on until it's all the way loose. And you want to screw it all the way down so that it's all the way loose. Put some lube on here. You also want to put lube on the main shaft here because this is what the spool is going to ride around on when the drag goes out. Okay, the first one that goes on is this, this copper washer. It's kind of a spring washer. And then this spring washer goes on and the cup side it's best if the cup side goes down you can see it like that that cup side is down that way would be the cup side up so make sure it's the cup side down just like so and then apply a little bit of grease ok 
okay. I didn't put any grease on the top of that copper washer. We want to make sure it has grease on it. Okay, that's good. This washer goes like this. So those little keyways lock it in place just like that. And then put some grease on it. And then one of the fiber drag washers. And then some lube. And now you put your spool on. And that's so snug. Oh, there we go. Now we want to put some lube on here. And then our drag washer. Some more lube. And then this washer right here, you can see that it's got a flat spot in there. There's a flat spot that this has to go in, and it goes like this. The flat spots go on there and lock it in place. Okay, I'm going to add some lube here. And then I'm going to add some lube on here. Now let me show you something nice on that you need to make sure you do. This is the cam right there, the pin cam. That right there. And that rides around on the outside of the spool shaft. Every time you're reeling it, so it's, it's spinning around there all the time. So it needs to be lubricated well. And it needs to be serviced um, um, fairly often. I mean, if you go um, fishing with this and you go fishing 20 times... Um, take it apart and make sure that that has plenty of lube on there. Clean it off and put it back on there and that will make this um, this spinner cone last a long time. Now one of the cool things about this spinner cone um, that was pretty cool is it actually had a little brass pin right here that spun around so that your line would actually instead of just rubbing on there it would spin like a little ball bearing. But that's a pretty cool feature on these Daiwas. I don't think they did that on a Zebco. So all I want to do here is just add just a tiny little drop of oil to the tip of that pin. That's all it needs. You don't want really any oil on the pin itself. Make sure that that's lubed. Um, you could take and oil this little hinge right there with just a little drop of oil and work it in and then put this back together. You gotta find the flat spot in there, and the flat spot mark matches up with that. And then you need to take and spin it just a little bit so that pin comes out. And then you can tighten it all the way down. If that pin is stuck in there and you tighten it down, you might not get this tightened all the way. So, so spin it just a little bit, and then you can put the nut back on there. <clears throat> Okay, and then use your big screwdriver or use your nut driver and tighten it on there. Make sure that the, the anti reverse is on and then, then it makes it easier to tighten it. Okay, and that's on there good. I'm going to put my handle back on. Apply a little bit of oil to this screw, just a little drop. This screw is made out of aluminum, so don't torque it down really hard. You'll strip it out. And make sure that it goes in there nice and smooth because you don't want to cross thread it. Okay? Made out of aluminum. And don't torque it down too tight, just a little bit. <clears throat> And then you can put this cap back on there. It's just made of plastic. Okay. The drag is working great. Let's tighten it up. Done. 
you know, and if you do that, you know, if you use your reel a lot and you service it, um, just that front cone at least once a season, and then the back, the back end here, service that once, um, once a season, at the beginning of the season, your reel is going to last you a long time. But these, these Procasters, these Daiwas, they're pretty good reels. I would say it's actually a really excellent reel, three ball bearing system, all metal gears, metal frame, it's a good reel. Anyways, if you enjoy my video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and subscribe by pushing on the button right over there. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.